one second. Well, I'll only be gone for one second. It's just the logo, so you're fine. Cool. Yeah. Wildly unprofessional, but yeah, right, we're starting we'll off great. Fine. Hi, Kayla. Can anybody hear this and how unprofessional it is? Yeah. Kayla, can you no. hear this unprofessional? Let, listen, oh, they're, they're, I can talk it talk in. The in. There's going to be microwaving soon. <laughs> Forks got clinking two on rooms. plates. He picks the loudest room he's got out of the two. <laughs> Banging things around, Jesus. At least he doesn't have a dog pitter pattering around. Oh, well, we're none of us perfect. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> we should ask him if he's got some bread. He's put his. Uh, why would you have bread? bread? No, RJ had bread. I know. Do you have some sort of food so we could just keep the trend going? <laughs> I don't. I ate before, like good. A half an hour ago. Uh, Kayla says I can hear the unprofessionality. Good. I'm glad Unprof someone is here to witness how unprofessional <laughs> this is. <city. laughs> Hi, Kayla. PJ rolls back up to the mic, grunting and scratching and <laughs> shooting snot out of his nose. <laughs> <laughs> Lord. all right it's, it's uh, just reminiscent of my streams dude look at, look at this hat man look at this hat well you're showing me so i yes i can see it however the show hasn't started yet so no one even else i can't see not it. even uh krista can see it kayla says it sounds like he's this ring light him. keeps like <laughs> well your auto exposure on your camera is gonna be uh it's, rough because yeah. it's a webcam and it's on a laptop what did kayla say uh, it sounds like he's weightlifting. Because <laughs> oh, of all the grunting. Yes. Said they kept saying you can't hear the weights. Oddly quiet weights. How many, did you take any notes, PJ, for tonight's show? I'm going to take notes all week. I haven't, but I usually don't for things like this. Um, I've been talking, I like, I've been talking about this game to a buddy of mine all week. So Dude, I usually yeah. talk to one of my best friends on the phone every day. Here's and the, well, usually I go back and forth with them about stuff like this. So Yeah. I well I don't I don't want to get it too into it yet because you almost got me started. The show hasn't started yet. Mm -mm. <laughs> um what, so we got three minutes in. How we many two people? Two and two. Two and two. Okay. I've got my notepad here. My Classic composition style Handy notepad, dandy notebook, which is actually just a tablet. I heard about your like etch a sketch thing, right? It it's it's something I gave my boss one, and she uses it all the time. It's such a useful thing. Like, just how many times have you reached for scratch paper and a pen and had neither? When this you can use a million times, and I like I, I didn't even invent the fucking thing, and I love it. I, I would have used it at my last job probably a lot because at my last job, I needed scratch paper all the time because I'd constantly be writing down like notes and stuff when I get phone calls and whatnot. But mm. like I now at my current job, I would never, well, I, mean, this, I would never use this it. This is for like home, home work or play PG. I keep one here in the studio. So like if we're doing I like to write whatever, though, if I'm the, the, my problem is that I like the feeling of writing on paper. This, this is a very specific purpose though. It's not, this isn't something you keep. Like I keep this here for like, if I think of a question while someone is talking, I don't want to lose it. Bam. If I want to draw like a discreet wiener off camera, bam. Does it. I do it. So, like Andy, uh, I, I bad mouthed him the whole last live using this. So it might happen to you, but you'll, you'll be <laughs> we, probably be watching the stream. So you'll see it. <laughs> we still need to play peekaboo with everybody. I'm trying to get it together. People are very unreliable. Yeah. You, it's it's amazing how quote unquote busy people are when on Discord all I see them doing is playing video games. I was gonna say <laughs> they're not busy. No, I know I know I know <laughs> RJ's schedule. And I'm like, I know some other people that I gifted the game to a bunch of people and I know that they would play if I gave them like a time. Yeah, we just need to I don't know why it's that's the thing about getting someone to play a game with you. It's like torture to them. Because if you're like, hey, try this game, it's so fun. And they're like, eh. And you're like, god damn it. They're like, ah, oh, you don't like fun. 
save. That's that's my reputation though. So I guess I've been torturing problem. Rob to play a game like a, a co-op with a game with me for years, and he I can't for the life of me. If I can get, and I'm like, like I don't want to play the game solo. Right. I'm like I want to play it in co-op. So right. I've literally been hanging on to it for years. I'm like you. I just want to play it. We can play tonight's game on co-op if I can get my controller to work on Steam, which I have not yet. But we'll talk about that during the show. How we've been on for five minutes. What? How many people are here? It's the same. It's the oh, same. That's right. There's multiple players. Yeah, yeah. up to four. We'll talk about it because the show's about to start, PJ. So okay, here we right, go. Right, Let's hear right. it. You're <laughs> listening to FFOP Radio. Reach the. Eye. Welcome to the show. My name is Dave, and this is a live show. So, you know, it's Friday. Flamingo Friday. Hashtag Flamingo Friday. So let's get some rid uh, not rid of, but let's get some housekeeping out of the way up front. First of all, you can see this nifty little shirt that I'm wearing. It's not actually a shirt. It's a onesie. Oh, my God. It's ridiculous. Dirty Randy. <laughs> I should. I what? forgot to text you. Yeah. So here's, here's the story. I get a package from Amazon. I say, I didn't order anything. I open it up, and it is this this flowered shirt. And I look at these flowers. I remember that I like flamingos. I say, oh, it's flamingos. I flip it out. Dirty Randy sent it to me. There's a little thing inside. It says, something for Flamingo Friday. I put it on. Krista looks at it. I say, look, flamingos. I'm wearing this thing for like an hour, right? Uh, mm -hmm. I say, Hey Randy, got your gift. He goes, yeah, I'm so pissed. Cause I sent him a picture. I was like, Cha ching, check it out. And he goes, Oh God damn it. They screwed it up. And I was like, how? He's like, there's no flamingos on it. And I looked down and I'll be <laughs> goddamn is right. There's not a flamingo on this thing. It's just uh, a tropical onesie. What do you call these flowers? A the hibiscus. Hawaiian ones, hibiscus. It's just pink hibiscus. Yeah. Cause he sent me a picture of the thing he thought he, he said he was buying, which I'm sure he was. Which looks exactly like this. Same color. So there's just some uh, worker who saw pink just like I did. Mm -hmm, and was like, too. flamingos, slam dunk, boom. So now I've got this jumper <laughs> that's pink uh, flowers, not flamingos. So I threw on my <clears throat> flamingo gator cloth. It's so funny watching him put this romper thing on. Like... <laughs> Rompers are a strange thing. <laughs> Not meant to wear with boxers also. What? I only wear, I only have boxers. I'm just saying. You have to wear them like the Scottish wear kilts. Nude? Well, I don't know about that, but at least we're like. No. <laughs> RJ, here's the thing. PJ. If, this is, sorry, sorry, PJ. We've already messed Something up and you haven't introduced him yet. Oh, sorry. Yeah, let's introduce <laughs> our. <PJ>. Um, <laughs> Yes, guys. I'm here in the, it's, in the woods, in the weeds. It's hashtag Flamingo Friday. Welcome to the show. Uh, uh, you've heard Krista. And let me zoom over to the video here of our guest. We have da, 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 PJ on the show. Here he is. Not RJ. Not RJ. We have PJ. Everybody, here's the thing. I have Andy and Adam. And I have RJ and I have PJ. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. <laughs> like, whatever, whatever. So, <laughs> welcome to the show. PJ, back on the show after pff, days, probably. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's this is seven days. very quickly turning into uh, PJ the sidekick. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like, you're, you're my, um, depending on how old you are, you're either my Ed McMahon and or my Andy... I'm younger than you because you're old. Yeah, I know I'm old. Who was Conan's um, sidekick? Andy Richter. You're my Andy yeah. Richter? <laughs> my Larry Bud Melman? Anybody? Gah. Anyway, guys, so here's what we're doing tonight. PJ and I wanted to review a game together. So what you're seeing uh, on the screen right now, actually right here, is the... the, the I, I was hoping... I shouldn't have when I'll tell you the story later. I was hoping there would be like a, uh, what do they call them, PJ? If you don't play for a while, a demo. Oh, like a, like the, yeah, the, the demo screens that yeah, I was hoping there was just gonna play be, like footage, just random yeah, footage. I was hoping that would happen, but that was foolish given what I'm about to tell you. 
So I said, PJ, I, I found a game we can play. It's old school. It's cheap. It's And, and not only that, it, it was a technical marvel. Obviously, we're talking about micro mages, you can see here. So the way I found this game was, I think, YouTube. I was busy at work, and YouTube was on autoplay. And it was just like, hey, here's a six-and-a-half-minute documentary about a video game. And I was at the printer, and I couldn't hit no. And so I, whatever, I went along for the ride. <laughs> and it was compelling. So micro mages here is something that the creator's morph cat wanted to do and keep within the exact limitations of the NES. So this whole game is 40 kilobytes. Wow. So that is why there is no uh, demo screen <laughs> because every last bite, <laughs> like when you watch, there's a documentary out there. So after this, if you are interested, I would recommend watching it because they go through like, Hey, here's what we did. And, and for what they got out of 40 kilobytes, because I'll be playing it later. Amazing. Um, so first impressions, PJ, um, are you a, are you a classic NES style game fan? Yes. So, I mean, that was the first system that I had I, that, growing up. NES um, is always hit or miss for me. For some reason, since it's so old, I always think the controls are too slow or there's something like not computing fast enough. I always found fault in the game. It's probably just me. <laughs> no, I mean, there's there's slight input lag. And even in this game, there is slight input lag. So, but I, I think know. that's just because of the system. That's just what it was. Maybe. Okay. So here's something interesting about this game, uh, because when you buy it, it's 10 bucks on steam. So you can play it through steam and they give you the ROM. So if like you are like me and Andy and you got like a raspberry Pi, they give you the ROM and you can throw it on your retro system or your emulator or whatever. Uh, which so, is nice. Which is awesome. I've played this game exclusively on my Raspberry Pi and will be playing it later. Which I was going to say, which will be interesting because I've played it exclusively on the, on Steam. Yeah, because so. I, I thought, you know, a modern day computer is obviously going to run a 40 kilobyte total game. Totally fine. So I thought I'd give this a try and see if it can handle. Obviously it can. But to see if there was input lag, and I don't know. I think this is one of the most responsive NES games I've ever played. It's also got unique um, it gameplay to it that was not around in NES. That that whole like sliding, yeah, the on, wall sliding. Uh, the wall sliding was not a thing on NES. No. So the fact that it's in this game is impressive because I'm sure that that was not easy for them to fit into the game. Well, it so, also probably means as to why the, the game isn't necessarily super long no. because there's they had to cut corners on certain areas. Yeah, to fit but it. but even like back in the day, it, an NES game would be a four to six level game, and you'd be okay with that. Like when I played Kung Fu, I've never beat that game. I don't know how many levels there are, simply because they all look the same. Like I've how never, many levels were in the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game on NES? Uh, I don't know. I never beat that either, but that was different because you were going through sewers and everything like that was. And plus they were probably using banks. I played and that one a lot. I, yeah, I played it a ton too, but I always sucked at it, but they probably used still bank switching and, and extra, uh, chips and stuff. This is 40 kilobytes. So we've got four levels essentially. So, and it, yeah. it, it does definitely, um, It's it feels cannibalized from the parts of other because like the wall climbing thing, I feel like everybody's touch point for that is like Super Meat Boy. Yeah, because it's the first it it was the first big one that like kind of made it into mainstream that was doing it that everybody knows by name. Yeah. And so everybody's going to look at that and be like, oh, they did it already. But I've seen it in a, a bunch of different places. There's a Vic 20 game that uses the same mechanic. Uh, so whatever, but, but here's the thing, cliche overused, whatever it's well implemented. Like there's not a frame stutter. Like it all feels as, as good as it should for what it is. I, I never yeah. felt out of control or like 
especially with some of the old games, especially if the programmers got sloppy or whatever, and they're like, hey, whatever, you know, it's going to sell a million copies. It's got XYZ character on it. We'll just do whatever. These guys seem to have like programmed this thing with an inch of their life. It's crazy. Yeah, I'm they they I'm I'm curious how many people made this. Uh I there I think in, in the French. documentary did it show how many people were on the team? No, it was all one guy um was uh, doing the voiceover for it and it was all just game footage. But like when I look them up, like if you look up Morph Cat Studios, they like this is their only game. They've got like a demo that was a proof of concept for a lot of stuff that happened in this game. And they've got this and something they're working on and have been for a couple of years. So I'm sure it's a very small team. But okay. so so one of the things we were talking about before the show is the fact that this is also a four player simultaneous game on the NES. Now, did you play with other people, RJ? PJ? Jesus Christ. <laughs> did you play no, with anybody no, I else? <laughs> so I, I played by myself. OK, so here's an interesting mechanic that I didn't realize that was there until I played with Krista. So when two people play, you know, it's kind of like Battletoads rules, which is annoying because you can bounce off each other and you can fuck each other up and oh, kill each other. Jesus. It was the worst. But here's the Battletoads thing. Battletoads is the worst game ever. Yes. And I, I was very upset at it for a very long time. I was like, this sucks. And I was, I was getting very mad at Krista. But, <laughs> but here's the thing. The more you play, the more you realize, okay, they work things around. So in the game, you can pick up things like the little um, fairy, the little sprite guy. What, like, what it looks like, uh, like an extra life. It yeah. It's an extra life. There's an, it's basically extra life. But what's that sprite from one of the Zelda games? Hey, listen. Yeah, that, that one. I don't know. How do you not know this? PJ, give me a hand here. You're a video I, game guy. I hate Zelda. Damn it, uh, so do I. So here, okay, whatever. So the people know what I'm talking about. There's those. So there you go. There's an extra life. And if your partner dies, you can push the select button and send that fairy to bring them back. But here's the thing. When you're dead, you get to be a ghost. So you can hypnotize enemies or freeze them and help the other person out still and pass through walls and still open up treasure chests. Yeah, I was good at that. There are treasure chests like that are... Um, completely inaccessible unless you are a ghost. Uh -huh. I think I s might have seen stuff like that. There's there's a few things where I was like, how do you get that shit? And like, there are some Easter eggs where like the walls are hollow, but not all of them. Some things you just have to be dead to get. <laughs> Navi. Is, Navi is which is interesting. Like, it's fascinating. There's all this stuff in there. Like they have the gems. There's all kinds of pickups. Um, and you want to get them all because it's so fun. But they purposely put shit in there to drive people like me nuts because there's a room like I think in the second castle with a bunch of boxes completely off limits unless you're dead. Mm -hmm. And it sucks because I want them. <laughs> <laughs> I was terrible at the game. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, It's definitely something I... <sighs> I don't know. It's when I, when I picked it up, I was like, okay, I kind of get it. And I wasn't very good at it. Now I'm okay at it. And I can breeze through the first like three castles, but that fourth one is hard. So also, so PJ, you said that you were having trouble with the bosses, which I found interesting. Well, it, it wasn't just, I shouldn't say that I'm having trouble with the boss as it on its own. It's by the time I get to the boss, I'm at so low lives uh -huh. that I just, that's where I'm struggling. So that's okay. So that's something interesting. I found out about, I found out, not out about it. Cause I was going to find out about it anyway. The, the, the levels are the fun part, the hard part. Like all the platforming is like the super challenging part. And I found every last boss, except for the last one who is unreasonably hard <laughs> given the, the previous three as a precedent. I found the bosses so simple and easy to get past. It was like, I fell asleep. The first one is, a, I mean, the first one is a joke. It's a joke. It's literally a joke. It's basically like, Hey, here's what's going to happen. Like it's, it's, I'm going to do a thing. You're going to, you know, it's classic Nintendo boss where you shoot them up a whole bunch. They try and get you, you run away from them and repeat. But were you having trouble with the Viking then? It's mainly because like <laughs> my, so 
there are times when my brain just decides to not work and mm-hmm. I like heavily focus on certain things, which is why like platformers aren't always my strong point because you need to be focusing on multiple things at once. Right. Um, whereas I don't do that well sometimes in games. So like I can hyper focus on things. So I play like shooting games and stuff and mm-hmm. super focused, but like in a game like this, where there's multiple things going on on the screen, I just completely ignore some things sometimes. So I'll be like, Oh, I forgot that that's happening. Like, I, yeah, I definitely get that. But it, it took me a while to wrap my head around it because especially with that wall climbing or wall scooting, whatever you want to call it mechanic and the ability to like shoot. And then you get the seagull later. That'll give you a little fly. Like it's amazing. I didn't even realize that you can shoot while you were hanging on vines for the longest time. (laughs) That's I, that's the thing. There are so many things that you can do that you wouldn't even like, did you realize PJ that if you push um, down on the D pad, your character will just start dancing. It's in the manual. No, it's labeled. It's it's (laughs) up is look up and shoot left, right, blah, blah, blah. Down is literally just labeled like dance. (laughs) And he does it. And it's hilarious. And, and, I, I think the characters are adorable. I think that now you didn't get far. So here's what I'm going to tell you. It right. is. Um, I don't know if this was intentional or not, or if I'm just pulling it out of my ass, but it is keeping in the themes of the eighties so much that it's kind of like an eighties children's movie where, you know, when you're, you've, you've obviously played the first two castles. So it's like, you know, you're fighting little skeleton guys and they're like, dee, 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 and you're just kind of hopping around and it, th- there's nothing really major going on. Like, like there's the goat that shoots bubbles and it, those yeah, first yeah. two levels, like they, there's an increase there, but by the, here's the thing. By the time you get to the fourth castle, it is now a full blown, like horror game. I really, yes. And, and it, it, I I'm hesitant about how much I want to tell you here because in the manual, it only explains up to the second castle, but this is a dissection. So fuck it. We're going to do it. Mm-hmm. So first boss is your, your ghost, you know, so, so easy. He's like, do 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 do. He just sort of floats along like a little jellyfish. He'll uh, try and touch you. You zap him a whole bunch. And he's like, do 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 fine. Done. Second boss. Let me check my notes. Cause I can't remember the Viking forgot Viking. So the Viking gets a little more challenging. You got the Viking in the middle and he shoots lightning. Is It's Donkey Kong Basically. with the guy shooting lightning down at you. But we got two barrel throwers, which you can kill, by yes. the way. I, that I did not know. Yeah, you can. Because I was like, these guys are assholes. And if I can kill them, I will. And I did. So then you get to the third level. And that one stymied me for a long time. Like, I've been playing this game for weeks now. And the third level kicked my ass. But we, you get to it, and this boss is even a bigger joke than the ghost. It's really uh, yes, I I couldn't believe it. It's a knight who's so big he fills the entire screen, and is as such just sitting the whole time. He sits. Sometimes some rocks fall out of the sky and you just keep standing under him and shooting his head, which never moves because he never gets up out of his chair. Uh, I like point like it's so easy. I couldn't believe like I was like, this is a boss. So by the time Castle four hits and it's a full blown horror game and we've got these skeletons. So, okay, so like early on, they have the little green ghosts. And they're adorable and they float at you and they're like, boo, and they got little smiley faces. By Castle 4, it's like these horrifying giant green skulls and they they pull like a boo sort of thing where if they see you or you shoot them, their jaw like practically becomes unhinged and they like, it's frightening. <laughs> they scream and they run at you and you're a tiny little maid shooting these tiny little Hadoukens at this giant screaming green bloody mouth skull. And so I thought, I thought I was going to be able, and I can't confirm because I still, I would, I died before the end, but so the, the first boss final boss stage kind of reminds me of Castlevania because it's multi, uh, it's like Dracula with his multi stages. I only say that because they're Mm -hmm. bats and it's, uh, space invaders with bats. And I was like, really, this is the end boss. And then came a giant eyeball and he kicked my ass up and down 
the, uh, like I was like, okay, so like whatever. So I, I wasn't expecting a great boss seeing that one was a ghost that died, you know, by blowing your nose on it. The Viking, the knight who never got up. And then this eyeball shows up that is like death destroyer of worlds who just rolls in. And whereas like, you know, the first boss is like, I'm going to get you. And they telegraph like the Viking. Each lightning bolt takes somewhere between nine and 20 minutes to generate. And there's like a little <laughs> thing that grows and it goes zap. <laughs> this eyeball is just like ruthless bitch. <laughs> so I can only confirm at least two stages of the last boss. There might be three or there might be, I don't know. It, and that's the thing. There's also like a hard mode and a nightmare mode. Ugh. I can't even imagine. Me neither. And <laughs> I, so here, here's the thing. There's almost no story. It's basically year four mages. Uh, the princess obviously has been stolen. We're nicking that idea. Uh, so, you know, you're just like, go through these four castles and shoot a bunch of bad guys. And it's, I, a well, bunch of undead people, a bunch of undead people. So and I know maybe that, goblins I, are those goblins that hop over your shots in the second stage. Yes. So that that's, I, I, I love the enemies in this game too. I, 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 I wish I had more like anger at this game. Cause I know that's funnier and that's what everybody wants to hear and come see and be like, ah, it sucks. But this game, <laughs> Don't worry. I have anger. Yeah, for I know it, you so hated fine. it, but like this <laughs> game, I felt so delightful and fun. Like I couldn't get enough of it. I, I play it, you know, all the time I've got it loaded up. Uh, you know, I, I bring my raspberry Pi out to the, the room, uh, the living room where I've got it set up in the bedroom. I can play it wherever. It's just like, I, it, what, you know, for, for $10, it made me so happy. Uh, but apparently it made you very angry, uh, PJ. So what was your, <laughs> it's just cause <laughs> it's a platformer thing. Platformers are just, they are not near and dear to my heart. The only platformers that I did okay with were like Mario and stuff back in the day. So see, and that's my thing. I think that Mario is so boring. I think that the Mario style platforming is so uncompelling Maybe I, I maybe, like Mario 3D platforming better than 2D platforming. Possibly. I, I think that. my maybe the thing that I love about this the most is the verticality because you know this is a vertical scroller instead of a horizontal. So Yeah. See, I don't like personally vertical scrollers because I don't like having to jump all the time. I don't like the fact that I like moving to the right. The encroaching darkness coming up to yeah. eat you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I kind of get that. Uh but I, I don't know. Personally, I'm finding that I'm I'm drawn to games that have, you know, something burning right behind my ass. I need something to keep me moving forward. And uh, the interesting and kind of cute thing about this game, too, is how fast and slow the screen will move. Like it's not it, it starts moving slow in the in the later levels. But if you want to go faster, then it'll keep up with you. And I feel like in the harder difficulties, that's probably what speeds up is yeah, how does. fast the stage raises. Yeah, by the time four shows up, like it's it's literally chasing you up the the castle. But by then, like you know, you you sort of get your feet under you and you get what's going on. The, and the the climbing mechanic, or I I say like by then, it's for me, it's been weeks that I've finally gotten a handle on the the shit. But but. I think that's the thing is you need something burning behind you. And maybe that's it. Like with Mario, you could stand there all day and the timer would just run out. And I'm like, eh, this is a little, it gives you a little push. So, yeah. so are, uh, are you obviously, uh, I, I imagine this isn't something you're going to be coming back to for pleasure. No, I, I may, I may come back to it. It's just that, I play, I have to play it in spurts because mm -hmm. I just get angry at it. So yeah. I'm just like, and also sometimes <laughs> I need to collect my thoughts because a lot of times in games like that, like I'll run into an area, die, and then just run back and die again. Die again. Yeah. But like, I didn't think about why I died and like what I could have done to fix it. Mm -hmm. So I need a second to like, think about that. 
because all the other games that I play, I have a chance to like dwell on my thoughts. Where in this game, I'm just rushing to get to that point again. Yeah. It, um, you, so I have, I'm thinking about too many different things at once, getting to that point that I don't have a time to actually dissect why it is that I died. Yeah. And it makes you so angry because it, it, it does like put like, it'll give you, you know, everything you need is essentially given to you at random, like the hearts, you know, all the little gems and the pickups and all the extra lives and stuff, you know, whatever, all the boxes I feel are generated at random. So I, you, you do sort of want to get back into it. And I think that one thing that drove me back more and more is like, I, I want to know how this found you when you die and like the little blood uh, splashes sort of shoot out of your body and you're, and you fall in a heap. I found that so adorable. I couldn't stay mad at my deaths. <laughs> like, I, I mean, it was gruesome. <laughs> yeah, I know. But I mean, in, in, in an adorable way, this is kind of like, um, like I was saying, it's like an eighties childhood, like cartoon where it gets dark and spooky at the end. Like they draw you in with these little, like the cute little villains and the characters and like the little mage characters are adorable because they're just like these little, uh, Jawa looking characters. Here's a good reference for you. Uh, mm -hmm. and they're running around and then, you know, nub, they, they nub, can, nub. yeah, <laughs> you know, or Ewoks <laughs> and then, you know, they can dance and there's all this, and, like they're adorable. And that's juxtaposed with like, when you die, like you throw your arms in the air and blood shoots out of you like in two directions and like it splashes on the walls and your body falls in a heap. Like it's such a, I don't know. I, I, that's the thing. I like it so much. It's hard for me to be like this part. I hate like even the fact that it's hard. <laughs> I'm totally fine with because since it's only four levels, if I'm able to blow through it, I, I mean, all NES games are hard. They're not easy. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. There, I don't think that I can't think of an easy NES game. So, well, and, and one thing that this doesn't do that a lot of old, like vintage actual NES games do is like that flicker. And in the documentary about this game, they talk about how they specifically did not want to have that because it is distracting. Like, I know everybody loves Mega Man, but every time I try and play that, the screen tearing and the flickering and everything, just like it's so distracting to me. And, you know, maybe I'm just a superficial uh, asshole who gets stuck on all the, the superficial details. But like since this the, the animation of this game is so smooth and so fluid and so great, it, it made me want to keep going back because I knew that see, maybe it's just me. But in the back of my mind, when I see flickering graphics, I know that's a limitation of the programming or whatever. But in the back of my head, I'm thinking that's a glitch. Something's going to freeze. I'm going to lose this run. And this doesn't do yeah. that at all. And which I think that's part of my thing too, is Nintendo, you know, it was still the wild west of video games. They were trying to get everybody back on track. And so playing Atari games at my grandfather's house, I had that track record of like, Oh, this sucks. That sucks. But they were buying them left, right and center. Cause they were everywhere. And the Nintendo, the quality was there for the most part, but there was still the flickeriness. And maybe that's my thing is I just, I just never learned to trust PJ, I just never learned to trust the NES. <laughs> <laughs> so, <I'm heartbroken. laughs> so it looks like I'm looking up Micro Mages. It looks like only two people made this game. I, I'm not okay. surprised. Um, the, yeah. There was, you know, obviously the only developer. two people made Super Meat Boy. Mm -hmm. The designers are Julius Ricci and Nicholas, but French. They're yeah, French. They're they're French guys. And then the programmer is just the one Julius guy. The artist is Nicholas, and the composer is Julius, and that's it. Yeah, I and for, and forty kilobytes, and so you know whatever. What uh, what we can do here is, if you guys are interested, I will play a little bit for you. Zwing, and remember, this is on the Raspberry Pi. So as you watch this, boing. You got to show your controller. Uh, do I? Well, I'm not speed running. Yeah, but Plus, no, I meant like not sh literally show video footage of it just show it oh uh what do you mean like hold the people it know the what camera? kind of controller you're using with the raspberry pi that's all oh uh well the whole screen is being taken up by the game right now and i can't yeah <laughs> but it, i'm it's just what it, it's it's a buffalo classic usb gamepad in the shape of a um, 
SNES controller. It's the most ergonomic I find. So here's the thing, RJ, or God damn it, PJ. Here's, uh, look, there's the fairy. <laughs> the fairy. So look, here are the adorable little skeleton assholes. Here's the adorable little character I am. You can see the fairy running around me as we speak. But did you know this? If you're a confident asshole like myself, uh, and you're like, you know what? I don't need a checkpoint flag because I'm so good. I'm just going to straight up uh, not checkpoint at all. I'll show you something. Oh, crap. Just kidding. I accidentally hit it. Yep. Moral of the story is you can shoot them and blow them up for points. However, hmm. you can't uh, check in. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> so if you're... I This... Uh, Oh, I actually, so the first time I found one, I shot it and blew it up. I didn't know I was supposed to walk over it. I yeah, literally I, just uh, shot it. I did it accidentally, so. <laughs> <laughs> boing, boing, boing. I was like, I was like, I had to shoot everything up to this point. I don't trust this flag. Yeah, it's and like, <laughs> so as, you, as you're watching this, you can see all the little, all the little nuances. There's your dancing guy. So yeah, there's, th <laughs> there's three <laughs> levels in each of the four worlds and the fourth level has a fourth or a, the fourth I'm curious as to what level. the four stars are. Uh I don't I've never gotten less than each. crap. I've never gotten less than four stars. So I don't think there's and it's it if I blow up all the crates, I blow up no crates, if I shoot all the enemies, if I shoot none enemies, I always get four stars. So I don't know what the uh what the I deal I, is. I think it's just a design thing, but I'm curious as to what why. <laughs> why? Uh maybe oh maybe it's the checkpoints because I haven't been able to blow one up yet. Oh yeah, maybe it's if you get all four checkpoints. I'll uh, if I can get one that I can actually blow up. So here, like obviously, you know, we're getting a little darker. We got some bats. We had our little spooky skeleton guys that walk around, even though they're absolutely adorable. Kayla says it would be easier for you to just use J for both PJ and RJ. <laughs> Let's call them both J. True. Oh, I was supposed to call uh, PJ. I'll be Will Smith. You can call me J. <laughs> God. <laughs> <laughs> boing so uh little known fact or at least this is a fact i didn't know because i thought this was a bald eagle it's actually a seagull you actually find a an enchanted seagull feather that you an enchanted <laughs> seagull yeah you, so i was like oh cool bald eagle in a Pretty dark badass. castle makes yep. total sense ta-da doot Goats that blow bubbles. Yeah, that's that's the thing. They're like little devil goats, but they're adorable because they blow bubbles. That's what I'm saying. Like everything in this game starts out as like cute and adorable. And see, here we go. So this is the first like uh, next level enemy, if you will. We got these little walking dudes because when you shoot them, they'll blow up and throw bones. Yeah. Remember how that part about I told where my my mind only focuses on one thing at a time. <laughs> When I would blow them up, I wouldn't pay attention to the, the bones that would come out of them at all. And <laughs> in a lot of stages where, where the goats were, when you had like multiple goats attacking uh -huh. you at the same time, I would skip a goat and then not pay attention to that goat's bubbles coming up from behind me. Uh -huh. And I would be like, oh, hey, I would be like, hey, how did I just die? And I was like, oh, yeah, there's another goat down there shooting bubbles. So and did you apparently know those bubbles go a hundred feet in the air? So yeah, they, that, they, they last. I can't believe how long they last, but did you know that you can charge up your, your magic blast for a little baby Hadouken? Nope. I did Boom. not know that. I think we're losing frames. Cause every time I try it disappears, but boom, there we go. Another seagull. That's the thing too. Since the pickups and like the upgrades are random, It'll hand out dozens of uh, seagull feathers, and I'm like. Also, these like chainsaws on the wall right here is 100% Meat Boy. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I. That's the thing. Everything here has been done already, but that it's it's done so well that I'm okay. If you want to rip something off, that's fine. Like everybody rips everything off, mm -hmm. but do it good. I also think that the the only weird thing I found with the controls, and it's because I'm not used to it because I just don't play games like this, is you have to, when you jump, you have to um, hit the jump button and press the direction of the wall. Yes. Which yeah. I'm not used to. So that that's like I was trying, like I'd be wall jumping and I would just a lot of times hit jump 
and just totally forget to hit the direction. Yeah, and I I've been that playing, was what would throw me off a lot of the time. The game I played that helped me get over that was like Super Turrican Two, I think, because like the first or second level is full of that shit, and I knew that someday I was gonna have to use it, so I kept playing it. And here we Why are. Why don't you just hadouken him, Dave? Just hadouken him. <laughs> 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 So, and then he does this little thing, and it's adorable, and you shoot him a whole bunch. But that's the thing. He just goes right over you, and you keep shooting him. He's just yeah, a, he's... It, I don't think... I think you would have to close your eyes yeah, and, he, and pray that he actually hits you for him to actually hit you. He's an adorable <laughs> little marshmallow flying around, and then you kill him. You can bounce around a little bit. Boing. Boing. Whee. Well, I can't imagine playing this with four people. No. But now that I, <laughs> now that you can kind of see that dying isn't actually dying and there's still stuff you can do, it's not so bad. Like, it's not a full-blown battle toads. Like, you can just murder people, like your friends and acquaintances, and there's nothing they can do about it. <laughs> it was so hard to, like... Because when I played with David and... He was getting mad because he'd be bouncing on my head because I'm following behind him, but there's nothing else to really do. Like, I feel like if there were four people and there's four people trying to do the same thing, it would be a nightmare. Everybody would need to like split. Oh, here, here's your little jumping goblin there, PJ. <laughs> yep. So when you uh, Hadouken, does it go further than a normal shot? It does. So this, um, you can't really see because the, for whatever reason, the little shots of this guy are dropping out of frame. But um, it kind of has like the Mega Man thing where only so many of them can exist on frame at once. So, yeah. The big one, since it it uh, takes so long. God dang it. It'll go farther. Like if I can Hadouken this guy. I didn't like Kaboom! that part either with the, the tubes and you have to jump up onto the rope from the tube that you like go in and it pops you out the other side. Not a fan of that. Yeah, I mean, like I get, I get it, but I'm not good at it. Yeah, these tubes can be super annoying, but like once you get the hang of the seagull, it's like game breakingly easy. Because mm -hmm. all I got was like, oh, I'll just fly over here and enchanted and... seagull. Yeah, yeah, sorry, enchanted. He's a <laughs> magic. Don't little... disrespect him like that. <laughs> <laughs> He doesn't just sit there and eat McDonald's fries, okay, Dave? <laughs> he does scream mine a lot, though. <laughs> uh, uh. Deet, deet. Woo! There we go. So that's the thing. I these I'm I played these first two castles so much. It's no so problem. So that part that you just did, where you had to jump over that the skeleton who's walking in that part, um, I hate that part because <laughs> if you don't have the seagull, it sucks. Oh, and well, it sucked for me because at first I didn't realize you could shoot while you were on the rope. And I was like, how am I supposed to make this jump uh -huh. with this damn <laughs> skeleton here? And then that was where I ended up eventually finding out that you can shoot on the rope because I was like, let me just try and shoot on the rope. And then I shot and I was like, wow, OK, yeah, this, <laughs> that makes a lot more sense now. This game did give me a lot of like, oh, that would have been nice to know moments. <laughs> So here's another this goddamn goats and those stupid bubbles that go all over the place. Yeah, this is the this oh, is that part I was talking about where like there there are three goats at one point on this stage mm -hmm. shooting bubbles in the same area. Yeah, and they load it up with these stupid little jumping goblins who like just go up and up the stupid staircase, even though there's fucking boxes everywhere. Whatever. I still think the <laughs> goblins are kind of. Adorable. I just ignored most of the goblins in all honesty. I after. <sighs> You know, whatever. The funness of the game is whatever, getting all the enemies or whatever. But after a while, I'm like, okay, I'm just going to, like, what? Bye, goats. You know, have your fun time shooting bubbles at your goblin friends. I got to go. <laughs> Die. Because I assume eventually I will find some sort of princess. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> No, she's in another castle. Mm -hmm. She's always in another. So, oh, God, no, my blood. So there you go. First adorable little death. <laughs> <laughs> His blood flies out everywhere. Bang, bang, bang. And 
all all the treasures are so inviting, but they just give you points. And I realize that points are meaningless. I, I I'm pretty sure all the passwords are the same because now I'm looking at your password. I'm pretty sure that was my password. Yeah, yeah. they are. Uh, I've written <laughs> all of them down, so I can probably put them in the show notes if you do want to try this. And <laughs> you're frustrated. <laughs> Well, like I just saw your password. Your password is the same as what my password was. Yeah, since this is only 40 kilobytes, they're not uh the only thing they're saving is the checkpoint at the <laughs> at the beginning of the stage. Well, is the password different per world? Uh yes. Yeah. Each world has its own. Is it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cuz when we first played, yeah, the password for the first world was different than than this one. I think this one starts with a 3 or something, right? And the first one Oh with god, I'm else. dead. <laughs> Yeah, the first one starts with the two, second one starts with the three, the last one starts with the seven. That's how you know it's hardcore. Mm. Level seven. <laughs> and they ain't kidding. Whoop. Oh, they, whoop. Oh. You 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 slid into first on that one. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> you well, survived. They, Your body made it there, but here's the thing about these goats. They can't turn around, so you can shoot them in the ass all day. <laughs> And they'll just shoot bubbles the other direction. <laughs> now I have a personal vendetta against these damn goblins. Dude, they're annoying. They're very annoying. They are. And it like, especially in these stupid jumping levels, they're all those. There was, I, I literally was talking about uh, annoying enemies in games today. And I was just like, the goblins. These stupid goblins in this game are annoying for the sake oh. of being annoying. <laughs> like, yeah, they I, don't do much except avoid your attacks, and then you may accidentally hit them while you're trying to do things. Yeah, and but the, like the beauty of that's their, all they do. The beauty of their strategy is like since you're limited to like whatever three shots before the like you know the Mega Man rule, all they have to do is jump over the first two, and you're screwed. Yeah. Because then you have to wait until they go all the way across the stage or get lost in the uh, the graphics. You know, those beautiful boxes I can never get at. Bang. Ah! Oh, God. <laughs> I wish I had a seagull. Super Dukin. There we go. <laughs> See ya, sucker. Okay. One thing that does annoy me about this game, there is no fall damage. However, he does, your character will do a small butt stomp, which costs you time and possible death because you can fly into other people, enemies rather. There was a little adorable little ghost. <laughs> See, we're still pretty adorable right now. Like we got little <laughs> skeletons, we got little goblins. Oh crap. There we go. Here's my seagull buddy. He will help me turn this game into a Yeah, that, the, the ghosts on this one, like, at one point I was avoiding them. I was just like, I'm going to ignore them. And then at one point there were so many of them, like, oh, oh no, I can't ignore God, them anymore. You can't because they, <laughs> they travel in packs. Crap! Die, goat. And you're like, ah, because you think, you know, the goblins, they, they don't go anywhere. But those ghosts, man, they'll get their friends. Oh, God, death. So... Full disclosure, it's really hard to play through a video capture card because there's a fair amount of lag. <laughs> yes. Yes, there is. I, With my old capture card, I used to have that lag. And there was sound lag, too. So, like, certain oh. games are damn near impossible to play. And, oh, it's rough. Oh, God. And, so I, I used to have to have watch my TV. And <laughs> I'd have the sound which would be delayed in my ears, but the TV would, it was, yeah. <laughs> Here we're going to, we're going to skip to the last castle. Cause it's super scary. And I want you to see it. Cha-ching. Uh-oh. Password. Password time. So we have fans, which uh, you think, Oh, those are so fun, but they will literally kill you. And these goddamn eyeballs. Okay. So we have bouncing eyeballs, which I hate. We've oh, got it's more purple. Of these lightning. Yeah. Uh, uh. 
I'm just now starting to see everything. So it's got some <laughs> eyeballs, some lightning, multiple of the bone throwing skeletons. Yeah, it's. Uh, I'm telling you, by the fourth uh, castle here, this is pretty rough. So also, here's another guy you'll notice uh, up on the top right here is the pitchfork throwing devil character. Is oh. you know the trident throwing guy? Tr trident, yeah, pitchfork. I I assume tr pitchfork because he's the devil and not the uh, you know the submariner. He's like a hammer brother. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, ghost. So he looks see. like a bull almost. Yeah. Yeah. And okay. a random worm. Okay, cool. Oh, yeah. Those little snakes are cute but annoying because they just wait for you and then they will get angry and come get you. They're like little kamikaze guys. Uh, oh, oh. There is a lot going on on the screen yeah. right now. Oh my god, the bubbles. Uh, and I lost my <laughs> seagull, which is going to be annoying. So here we go. Otherwise, I would just fly. Yeah, the seagull in this game makes things very easy. And when you don't have it, it like... Makes just it almost impossible. Being... Yeah, it makes it incredibly hard. Because like, I, if I had a seagull, I would just straight up... Crap! Fly past everybody. Oh wait, maybe I'm an idiot. Let me try something. Yeah, you you could go around to the right. Yeah, I. <laughs> Every time <laughs> I tried that in previous attempts, though, it always uh, ended in my. Oh, you died. My gruesome death. Ha <laughs> Duke and goat. Oh God, the bones! Why are they staying so long? He's got. Bone staying power. <laughs> oh god, the bubble. Okay. Do 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 do. Boo. Whoop whoop whoop. Uh -oh, uh -oh, uh -oh. Hold on, baby. We're coming. Oh god. Oh, Jesus. There's no way. Don't you worry I about old Dave. Wait for it. <laughs> oh nope. Yep, that's why. That's why. It's a fan, and they're very dangerous, PJ. Usually they the have, fans will kill you? Yeah, they, usually they have uh, covers over them because spinning blades are very... Oh, God! <laughs> 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 so, the, basically, if you were to see me playing this from the, from the jump, like from one and see me die, this is basically how it was. Because four is hard. But I'm so good at one through three, it's no big deal. And these goddamn dudes with the dumb and bones. And he gets a four, and everything changes. Yeah. Oh, God, there's so many things happening. How That's what I mean. Like, my brain cease, will just cease to function after a certain amount of things going on on screen. Yeah. It's, uh... Uh... <sighs> But it's it's the it's the right amount of frustrating. I'll say that. Yeah, it is frustrating because you got these goddamn eyeballs everywhere, and uh, oh my god, I hate them. <laughs> so RJ or RJ? Oh my god! I <laughs> so get, get, someone get RJ on the phone so I can talk to him. <laughs> god damn it! He should be home now. Probably. Uh, so, PJ, if um, if you were going, like, someone says, hey, what what do you think? Should I buy this game? Are you giving this game a recommendation, yay or nay? I would give it a recommendation for people who like platformer games, for sure. Because I think it's it's unique, and it's, it's still good. It's just, I suck at platformer games. So, <laughs> I myself may not be good at it, but that doesn't mean that the game isn't good. Right, and, and I... That's the thing. I with a lot of these types of games, I can see where people like certain stuff. Like I don't get a lot of stuff. Like puzzle games, for instance. Like to, as a huge genre, I am sucky at puzzle games because I'm not smart or clever, and I don't know math or or science. And so, uh, that that's a genre I have never gotten into. But like, what was that big one that came out? 
The Witness? I don't know. Uh, it was like a huge a puzzle. game? Yeah, it was... I think it came out on Steam. Pretty sure. It was like that walking simulator where you're just running around doing puzzles. Why can't I remember I mean, names of games? I remember the name in, um, Pyre, which is... A get, so here, this is a short story. Long time ago, ooh. I think I was talking to you about a basketball like life sim game, and I was like, I uh -huh. don't know what the name is. And you're like, oh, well, it's Pyre. So if you look it up... so. <laughs> Fun fact, Pyre is made by the company that made Hades, which was my game of the year. Yes, I year. found I found that out while doing so, a little research. I was like, oh, I uh -huh. can't believe because I was looking into I probably Hades because I don't think I would look into Pyre. Mm. And I was like, oh, yeah, same company. That's interesting. But like uh -huh. also weird because what kind of game is Hades? It's like a third person like Hades is a roguelike. Rogue yeah. That's it's it's a roguelike, but I mean, damn it, that company has made a different style of game for every game they have made. They've yeah. none of them have been the same style of game. So, and I appreciate that. Uh, ph maybe not so the philosophy, but like that. Uh, what well, appeals? They're four to games deep. They've made four games in ten years. Yeah, so. like there there are some companies, like let's say with Digital Revolver. Oh yeah, they they're wacky. I love them. Yeah, but you, you know what you're getting with them, and I, I get it. Like their their whole thing is like uh, you know pixel art two D yada yada. It's like I, their whole thing, like you say digital revolver, and you you know what kind of game you're getting. And I appreciate those companies because they are taking those mechanics and game ideas and polishing them to a mirror shine. So by the time you get you know to whatever umpteenth installment of their different kind of roguelike or whatever like it's it's the best it can be and that's that's that and there are places for that but the companies like where they're making a different game every time i think that's awesome because you have a better chance to fuck up and, but not only that like the fuck ups are funny and everything and i love when when video games fuck up or it, bad movies or whatever everybody loves that shit but you could accidentally stumble upon something that no one's ever done before and is awesome. Yeah. And it's because no one would ever take a chance. Mm -hmm. Like there's nothing groundbreaking about a lot of games that are coming out, but you know, they've got it down to a science like this game. Uh, Micromages, they got it down to a science. It's 40 kilobytes. There's not a, like a sinew of fat. Like there's nothing except meat on this thing. Like, but that's what they did. They took 40 kilobytes. God damn, I fucking, my fucking game. <laughs> <sighs> but <laughs> so, uh, what do you, what do you think we should review next PJ? If anything, uh, I think. I mean, I don't, I don't know which game in particular, but I think we should maybe. So I know you like to do a lot of driving games. Yes, I do. <laughs> maybe we should do something driving related because I like driving games. Do so yeah, I was, I was gonna say we should for for the next one maybe be something that you actually enjoy or at least have a skill set in because I realized that th this was sort of off the top of the dome here. And I was just like, Oh, here's a fun game. It's cheap. And it's also sort of blah, blah, blah. And obviously uh, maybe not obviously, but most of this uh, interaction we are having in the game that I am playing was based on the accidental documentary I saw. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we could do some, I would say we do something driving. What, what, regardless of what it ends up, what that driving ends up being, but and yes, I, I, there's, here's the thing. I love, the driving sims and everything. And there's like my bus sim, it's got like multiplayer and we can live in the same world driving buses in the same, but I don't want to like sign someone up for like a $35 game like that and be like, okay, now let's drive a bus. And then like, if you know, 35 bucks is a big investment for something that is not in your wheelhouse and possibly could be very disappointed in. So if we can find something that's like, you know, 10 bucks or less. I, I feel not as bad with 10 bucks or less. Cause if you can spend as much like on a meal at 
uh, Taco Bell or Burger King. I'll call it, it you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. It's, I'll it's find something. <laughs> <laughs> but I was thinking, you know, not only should we couple it with, you know, something you like, but maybe it should be some sort of sweet revenge, like something I'm no good at, like JRPGs or some sort of. Final well, see, no, III see, that's style. you can't. I can't just make you play a JRPG because those are very long games. Right, that's like, the thing. Like, I <laughs> that was just something I know that I don't like that I pulled off the top of my head. Yeah, like if I if I was like, yeah, I'm gonna make you play a JRPG. Forty hours later, you're like, I'm gonna kill him. Yeah, Go I, to kill him. <laughs> It, it's hard to find something like snack sized that. Um, That's why I like driving games. Like I, I, I just got uh, the PC version of Xbox Game Pass, and I have uh, access to Forza Horizon, and I'm super excited about that. I just like to play driving games. I here's my secondary problem and krista has seen me go through this roller coaster of emotion dozens of times as i peruse steam's um what you call it like trailers mm -hmm. it's yeah. like oh here's a thing you're gonna love it's like whatever let's say it's a train simulator or whatever game i am you know has caught my fancy and it it starts out i'm what i'm looking for is something simple something casual something i can sit back relax and just, you know, play and not be worried about. And so one thing will start. And it's like, oh, let's drive a bus. You know, put a sticker on it. That's fun. Won't that be fun? It's so easy. It's so fun and easy. Casual and it'll be fun. And then by 30 seconds into the trailer, you know, it's like, oh, now you're running a bus depot. You're and now an empire. Yeah, now buses. you own every bus in the USA. <laughs> and now you're, you know sexually assaulting your employees because there's a, a really in-depth like employee abusing uh, mechanic in this an game HR nightmare and, yeah and you're like filling out forms and i was like i just wanted to play a game where i drive a bus and or set some trains in motion and the trailers always start out it's like casual gameplay relax enjoy get on a nice little wooden train and you know whatever and then you're it pans a, out to a universe yeah and then you pan out and it's like that simple wooden train is like a, a, a hilarious distant memory as now you are a beaten down broken man working in like a wooden <laughs> train factory and all you wanted to do was just play with the goddamn thing and now it's your career and i'm like that's not what i'm like Remember when games were games and it wasn't like a complete investment in like a life changing and a career decision? <laughs> like I, you Pretty could pick much. up, you could pick up Mario any Mario as much as I bag on Mario, and and all the games like it and all the whatever. At least they don't ask you to like pick up a part time job when you pick up the controller. I yeah, and you know God bless the people who love you know part-time jobs you pay for like keith i know i talk mad shit about him a lot but he's the only one i can think of off the top of my head who does this he'll he loves these games where they are jobs it's like a 40 hour a week like up oh, gotta wake up grind for sticks gotta find some minerals gotta train some giant things and then i'm like ah I, I get that. Uh, I get so like the, Ark, and you played Ark for a while. Oh yeah, no, I Ark is fun. believe you me. Yeah. I loved Ark until I realized that the dinosaur veneer uh, finally wore away from all the polish that I was giving it. Mm. I was like, oh yeah. no, I'm tired of grinding now. Because after you got yourself a spinosaur, and after you got yourself an apatosaur, and after all this, and you can these, ride it. Yeah, it. after you've met all these monumental, life-changing childhood goals. And now it's like, okay, back to going to the volcano for more glass. I'm like, uh-oh. <laughs> this isn't fun anymore. <laughs> because it it turned the dinosaurs from fun, giant monsters to where it's like, yes, master the beasts of the field because it's your domain as man. And these are simply, you know, whatever. And before long, it's just like that giant Quetzalcoatlus that took you 40 years to collect the berries for so you can tranquilize and then slowly feed and yada, yada, yada is now more, no more to you than a Toyota Camry taking you someplace to get rocks. Right. And then you Oy. can store the rocks onto the dinosaur and then. Uh, yeah. And, and it's just stuff. like the first time you take your, your giant Pteranodon out, don't get me wrong. Your balls swell. 
you feel great. <laughs> you you think, yeah, try it. Because that you because up until that point, you've been scraping and bowing at literally every other predator on the ground. And now here you are on a giant flying Rodan style monster, and you get to say, fuck you. And it's great. And then you realize, oh shit, now like that there's nothing. All the scary stuff on the ground is now not scary. So there's that gameplay gone. And my giant monster is now just like, well, uh, shit, I got to get somewhere. However, my Pteranodon needs some more berries and I haven't gotten, you know, what he's hungry or he has to take a shit or something. And it's, it's gone from, oh, the majesty of a dinosaur to like the boring mechanics of like just a car. <laughs> like this thing is just a, it's just like owning a very expensive and annoying boat like, it's a yacht yeah it's kind of like owning a boat in arizona we have lakes here so yeah you can own a boat if you want to however it's arizona yeah you have to be like incredibly rich or incredibly stupid and drive three hours to the lake yeah and it becomes a job like your 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 fun times on the boat is now like holy shit i'm warehousing this thing 11 months out of the year and also uh it's expensive and well, it's an eight hour day just to drive there yeah. so whatever my, my long meandering soapbox is i like games that are like here's a fun game and if it slowly turns into like oh you know what would be fun getting a gun and then you're like yeah i would love a gun and then you go to the crafting menu and to get the gun is this disgustingly huge <laughs> fractal pyramid of bullshit that starts with grass and twigs and ends in microchips. Sorry. Like, <laughs> I I don't, if I were working for this and making money for it, I could see like, yeah, obviously I would love to go into the wilderness and collect various chemicals and grasses and metals just to get a gun so I can later shoot a thing that I can later transform into a Toyota Camry. Because <laughs> that's the thing. I, I loved it until I didn't, which sucks. Because I kept playing it being like, yep, time to go and look at my giant menagerie of beasts. And then I would get out and I would look at all my saber tooth cats. And I would look at my apatosaur and I would look at my spinosaur. And that's the thing. You get rich and you get stupid and you get lazy and you get careless. So I had this menagerie of giant killer animals. Ah, giant skull. And <laughs> I just got, I, I started taking them for granted, PJ. That's what happened is I started taking them for granted. And you know what happens? You take things for granted. You get careless. And then before you know it, like, literally all of my giant killer animals are dying because I'm like, well, I've got more at home. And before I knew it, I was saying I got more at home to an empty home. <laughs> just one day after another, just going in, picking some grass, feeding the animals, watching them take these enormous dumps. Like what, like the dump mechanic in arc, if you've ever played it is mind boggling. <laughs> I can't believe it. It's, it's like uh, <clears throat> Jurassic park. But even for like the saber tooth cat, like mammals, like the saber tooth cats, you'd hear this like, and you turn around and there's a shit ball, like the size of their torso. And you think, where did that come from? Number one. And why aren't you dead from passing it? <laughs> I'm not asking for you know exact turd mechanics, but something just a little believable. Turd mechanics. It's my new show. <laughs> the new name of the, ah! the live streams oh my god this goddamn giant scary skull was that my last <laughs> life i'm gonna be so upset if that was my last life okay oh shit this is getting tense pj the pressure is on <laughs> this is skull intense ah die jesus christ he's so scary oh my god oh jesus <laughs> But yeah, I'll find something for us to play. I'll find something like driving related, most likely. That that was my goal is to find something driving related. I something about driving. There's some. Oh, damn it, that was my last life. I'm very <laughs> angry about that. Because uh, to like, I think this weekend I'm either gonna play. So because I have Game Pass, mm. uh, I've downloaded the Medium today. Which is a game that literally just came out this week. The medium? 
Yeah, it's like a um, it's a horror action adventure game that just came out on Microsoft. Okay, stuff. Let me get your take um, on. Uh, I'll I'll hold off until you're done, but I got a question for but you. Yeah, that like I have that, and it's either gonna I'm gonna choose between that or uh, Resident Evil Three, which I know Snacks was talking about playing Resident Evil, but like yeah. I have Resident Evil Three because it was on sale, so I snagged the remake of it's it because I wanted to uh to try that as well. Yeah, I I would love to play, you know, some like I don't know if Broforce can be played remotely together. I know you can play local, but Broforce is something again, it's one of these ones where the the mechanic is ultra simple. You're just umpteen dudes. Every time you die, you come back as a different action hero themed character with bro in their name. I feel like they must have not that I'm accusing them of stealing cuz obviously no one's heard the show before. But it is suspicious that we spent like seven years ending the show by putting my idea, by the way, by putting bro into names and keeping them themed mm-hmm. only for bro force to come out. And all of them have bro in the title and it's called bro force. And I feel ripped off. <laughs> bro. bro. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, back to my question. What, how do you feel about all these gaming streaming services so we've got uh microsoft's thing stadia has just come out um where are you because here's my problem with these things they decide you don't get anymore you don't get anymore steam is already sketchy to me because you can you're you're getting download files or whatever and putting them on your computer but still if you lose service you don't get to play those games and you have even less of a hold on stuff with stadia or streaming services like that. Well, with steam, as long as you have it downloaded, you're fine. Right. But that's part of it is I, I get that there's a whatever, uh, sort of agreement with you and steam. So they'll, they'll, they'll give it to you no matter what, but like with Netflix, like the Netflix model, if they say, you know what, we're done playing the office. Now the Peacock has the office. Like if Stadia says, oh, we can't get any of the Gears of War, whatever franchise you want. Like, they, is is it like that, I wonder? Can they just drop stuff? Because that would worry me. Like I wouldn't, because I've got, I the reason I have Hulu and Netflix is because when one didn't have a thing, the other usually did. And that's becoming less and less mm-hmm. a thing. So it's, I think Microsoft has a good handle on it because with their system, they have all of their first party games mm-hmm. go straight to it. It doesn't matter who makes it. Right. Is if it if it's a, a Microsoft only game, it goes to Game Pass 100%. Um so for them it's great because you any brand new game that comes out, you can have it on Game Pass. Um and pretty much it, like if that's that's one of their stronger selling points. Game Pass has so many games on it. Like it's it's worth itself in spades if you want to play those games. Mm-hmm. Um, but the thing is, the other consoles don't really have a solid answer for that. Like Sony doesn't. Sony has a system in place, um, but it sucks. And it's not nearly like they have game. They have a good amount of games on it, but they don't have new games on it. Well, I think like, part they're of just now getting games that came out like seven or eight months ago. And I'm like, OK, like that's it's... that's fine and dandy. But like no one's going to no one wants it because it it's outdated. Well, I'm, sh- I'm so... sure it's insanely complex, like because because if you're going to be like if you're Google or you're Microsoft and you've got for all intents and purposes and unlimited budgets, do whatever you want. You can say, I, we want to do this. We're going to set up a room full of servers and have terabytes of storage where people are going to play games with all the processing in house, yada, yada, yada. Like for Sony or whoever to make that decision, I don't think they have just, especially like with Sony, if you keep up with them, like their only profitable area is the video games. Like, like everybody else, their camera division is dying. Like the movies are suffering. Like, yeah, Sony Sony is the weird one because like they right now they're on top of in the gaming sphere like mm-hmm. the amount of PlayStations that are sold is insane. But it's that is literally the only thing that's profitable for them, like you just said. So it it they struggle in um in the whole like streaming services. They they're not going to have them for a while if they even do. Whereas Microsoft has a solid foundation now. 
Microsoft has also teamed up with Nintendo for a lot of things. So mm. if anything, Nintendo will get help from Microsoft in that regard. Well, whereas Sony's going to be left behind, mm. but we're, st- I also still don't think that we're where we need to be in well, order for those systems you know, to work. Well, there, we're in a lot of everything is like everything in our lives right now is still in beta. Like VR is still not where it should be for 2021. Like everything we have is not where it should be as promised to us by popular media in the 1980s, and 1990s. So whatever <laughs> I get that. Uh, I, but, but may, maybe my, my hang up is I'm always going to be, and maybe I'm a dying breed, uh, a fan of physical media. Yeah. Like having, I, that is, that is definitely a dying breed. I even don't have as not, much physical media anymore. Yeah. Maybe even not a physical media. I I'll, I'll expand into that. Like I like having my own personal copy of something like if, even if it's just like a digital thing, if it's a ROM, like let's say it's Micromages, like let's say Steam decides we're not going to carry this anymore or whatever. I, they gave me a copy of this ROM, so I've always got it. And I like that because when it, it, you know, whatever, maybe I'm some ancient Sumerian on a reed boat trying to trade salt for skins, but I feel like when you give someone money, you should have something that no one can take from you uh, ever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's the it's that's where the line between like what Steam does and then what um like what Stadia is because Stadia is literally like Netflix. Yeah, and what so, if they fold? Like, what if Steam? They're going to. Well, yeah. Stadia is also going to fold. 100%. Oh, for sure. They and won't. that's what I'm saying. Like, I for my money, I want to be handed something either really or metaphorically. Like they say, here's a download code for an album. If you buy so that if the server goes down, I, or whatever, like, let's say my, I I still have an iPod, by the way, old man, Dave here, listening to an iPod. Let's say worst (laughs) case scenario, every piece of technology I have dies. I've got a CD burner over there. I could burn everything I want to a CD because I know I have a CD player somewhere. Worst case scenario. But yeah, it's, I mean, it's like, I, I, I do that. Like I'm kind of that way with my switch. So like I have my switch and I have a like 500 gig mm-hmm. uh, SD card on that system. Everything that I have ever bought for the switch that's been digital. I own on that system. I have it downloaded. Like it's all there. So if anything ever happened, it's all physically there. It's a backup. Like, I don't lose it. And maybe, maybe that's it. I, I don't, I don't know with what growing up because we didn't grow you and I were you was younger than me. You probably got more of this than I did, but I didn't grow up in a digital age where like it I was... didn't grow up in a digital age. <laughs> okay, I yeah, had so... physical. I had physical stuff until the like late like two thousand eight ish, and when I started buying mm-hmm. PC stuff more often. So yeah, and I, I so I think that's maybe that's it. If you if you grew up with physical media, I. I'm never going to be able to get around handing someone or giving someone money for something like it, it sort of chaps my ass that Netflix doesn't guarantee that it'll give you the things you want all the time, but you're at, you know, you're at their mercy. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I, I don't want to add another service to that where it's like what the promise is, Hey, good news. Our processors are always on. You don't have to buy a console, blah, 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 blah psych no one wanted it thanks for the money now we folded like how many how many streaming services all beyond games like radio video movie streaming sir how many of those have come and gone and yet we still see them rolled out with such like confidence and gusto like i stadia came out and was like boom bitch like we're you don't need a console again motherfucker buy this they, there's a game in your shit stadia blah, blah. also had one of their higher ups they had taken from EA. So she was a super high up at EA and like, it's just, it's crashed and burned. It's yeah. It's that no one is thinking ahead that like it, if this were like a, a junk food, there's always room for junk food. Cause America will always get fatter. You can always keep cramming food into your mouth. However, there are only 24 hours in a day and with everybody offering a streaming service, it's going to be feast or famine. The good ones will rise and everybody else will just die. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because pretty much. I mean, it's 
it's also with gaming too. Like Stadia is offering a service where it's like you can play your games anywhere, but if you don't have the greatest internet connection, you're going to struggle. And even then, like any game that requires like you to not have a lot of input lag, whereas yeah. like driving games, you when you're driving games, you need to make like instant decisions. You can't do that over the internet because there's going to always be more lag than you pressing the button. It seems in front of you. It's here's here's so. the counterintuitive enough intuitiveness of it all because it's sort of posed like hey good news if you're on a budget here's the thing you don't need a system just give us ten dollars a month everybody can afford ten dollars a month however if you're the type of person who can't afford a system you probably can't afford great internet and you probably can't afford you know blah xyz like to get stadia you need to have like a banger internet and probably like the accoutrement like a computer or whatever to handle that sort of input so you're still needing like a fair amount of gear. It's just they're saying, "Oh, it, you just don't have to buy a console." But meanwhile, yeah, some, I some mean, like poor sucker bastard. I don't think physical like, physical consoles aren't going anywhere because, like, look how many people are like a lot of people now switch to PC gaming anyway because it's like physical with, consoles. Even with me, there. like I start to realize now, uh, especially with like Sony, I wish I could play my digitally owned games that I had bought in on um, my PS I had on um, PS3. Mm. I had games where that are PS1 classic games, but I had them digitally. I cannot play those on my PS4 because they just PS4 does not have the option to do that. So I literally don't have uh, the ability to play games that I own digitally on my PlayStation four from, but I can play them on my PlayStation 3 if I hook that up. Well, so and here's and the thing. And it's digital. There's there's a silver lining to all of this though, because as we are all traveling along, you know, with the people at the bleeding edge and the people like me lagging a year behind and seeing what goes and what doesn't, whatever. Like, time cares not for your consideration. Cause let think back, 1990, whatever, two, when the PlayStation came out, and it was like people were putting years into titles like Crash Bandicoot and Jet Moto and Gran Turismo. And now there are umpteen different places. You can just grab that shit for free. Sony guarded that intellectual property with its life. And here we are 15, 20 years later, and it's practically like public domain for how, and like same with NES, SNES. So that's the thing. The high tide raises all ships. So when people start, stop caring, the community picks it up and you can relive those things mm -hmm. and maybe not even relive. Yeah, it's I just like, I, I want the ability to play those games. That's it. Cause that's like, I wish I think Sony would do well for themselves to make, even if, cause they don't need a streaming service. No, like have a service where I can play my older games. Like, cause they don't have any emulators. So they, they have a hard time running the, older games on the newer systems because and, they just don't want to take the time to develop an emulator that can do it. Th here, here's, here's what's bonkers to me. It's not like the raspberry Pi community is a secret. It's, you know, it, I, everyone is like, Oh, full disclosure and disclaimer, yada, yada, yada. Don't steal ROMs. These are games or intellectual properties, but everybody does it in that community. And there's YouTube videos showing you how to do it. Uh, this is just something I'm pulling out of thin air right now. But if I were Sony or Nintendo or yada, 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 and since like storage space literally takes up zero space, like see this little tiny SD card, this will hold 128 gigabytes in, in this little tiny thing. So why, why would not Nintendo, Sony, all these other like Sega old games be like, Hey, guess what? For since people are just stealing these anyway, why not Sony, Sega, Nintendo step up, be like, hey, guess what? For 10 bucks, you can have all these old ROMs. We'll put all the box art on them. You're stealing them anyway. At least we'd be making money. Because mm -hmm. and, they don't want to take the resources and time to do it. That's, re that's really but, what it is. But they have it. All they do, like, it would take one dude a month to take their catalog you know, do what, but I guess there's, there's problems with licensing. I get, so, but whatever, like Sega, all the games, they legit, like they own themselves, like all these companies, Atari, whoever is still around be like, Hey, good news. 
We're releasing Raspberry Pi ROM packs. Every game ever re-released by Activision or Nintendo or Atari, blah, blah, blah. Ten bucks. Fucking all of them. And it'll be fucking... Like, seriously, if you wanted to make... I know you're interested in making a Raspberry Pi. A yeah. retro Pi. So if you want to do that, and you wanted to put literally every game that was ever uh, etched into code for the Atari 2600, it'll take less space than a photo you take with your phone. <laughs> you take one photo on your phone and that will have more data in it than every Atari 2600 game ever. Yeah. And so that's why it's so crazy to me because Sony will say, here's a game. New Assassin's Creed, Ubisoft will say, here's a game. It's fucking 75 gigs. And meanwhile, they've got a back catalog that encompasses millions of hours. And it's like, uh, 17 megabytes and it's like our entire catalog it's yeah so i mean like it'll be so even easy. even the biggest i for like instance even the biggest playstation games were still like uh, some of the jrpgs were the long ones like the four discers like th those were still 400 megabytes yeah they're still way under a gig like way and and that, those were the biggest ones you weren't finding bigger games than those like those yeah. were just massive in scale because they were literally three to four discs so it's it's nuts to me. And and it's so crazy because like you you could because it's just that there's not I'm sure there's just not enough money for Sony to give a fuck because Sony would have to pay I mean look at they look at they did the retro consoles, like they did the the PS1 classic and it was terrible. Didn't have any good games on it because of licensing. Yeah. That that's it's really licensing that's the issue. Uh yeah. Music, I, images, whatever movies, is on there. Yeah, it's, it's the license. licensing kept Freddy from Jason. Licensing keeps Daffy Duck from Donald Duck. Hey Yattering's here. Hey Yattering, what up, man? Um but yeah, I I, I get it. So but I, I don't understand why companies instead of being like, hey, let's come together, we'll make this project, we'll do this thing, we'll each get a little bit of money. It, we each get half of whatever money that comes in instead of getting literally no money from doing jack shit. And for some reason to companies, it's always better to make nothing over half of something. Yeah. yeah. And that's, I mean, it's, but, it's but, like the, the games that I wanted them to remake the most, they'll never remake because of licensing. So right. uh, that that's okay. some things that'll always be, but that's where your, like indie community comes in because when like big companies say, well, we don't want to blah, blah, blah. There's always somebody to come in and be like, well, we'll just take it. Like there are fan edits of every movie out there. Like just because you can't get it easily doesn't mean you can't get it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then again, it's like, why not make it easily available? Like, uh. It's always a money thing. It's yeah, money. And, and that, it's it's beyond just video games too. I get that, but it, you know, if you can get Marvel versus Capcom, everybody can bury the hatchet and be like, "Let's shake hands and make some fucking money on these old video games." <laughs> I wish they would. There's so many games that I wish I could play. Well, and you know what's also crazy is it would cost them nothing to just put an emulator for the old operating systems onto the new PlayStation. I, I wish they would, but they, they don't, they no don't licensing. consider it a priority. And they've mentioned the higher ups at Sony have mentioned that multiple times. I and I don't understand why it won't make them any money because like fan slavering fanboys are going to buy the PlayStation five, no matter what. So P Sony will say, we don't give a fuck. You're going to buy it. If, if for a year people were like, we're going to hold out until Sony does what we want, then they would listen. But now since everybody trying to get one is desperate and Sony doesn't give a shit because when you have the least amount of care, you have the most amount of power. Yeah. Like it's, it's frustrating. Like I said, it's, there are a lot of older games that I wish I could play on the play. Like I'm, I'm replaying a game right now, playing it on steam and it's an updated version of the game. It's a remake version of the game and I hate it. I have game? the original version of that game on my PlayStation but I cannot play it on PlayStation 4. I have to hook up my PlayStation 3, and I don't want to do that. What game? So, 
Uh, like I'm, I, I know Snacks is talking about this too. He's playing the Final Fantasy games. So oh, am I okay. playing Final Fantasy four, but they made a remade version of it. And the mm-hmm. only version on Steam available is the remade version. And I don't want to play that one. It's like, it's it. What well, I didn't think it was that good. I want to play the original like SNES version of it, which is on, um, the like uh, on my PlayStation Three. I have to. I own the digital version of it. Can't right. Play. Maybe maybe that's part so. of it too. Is like, unless a company can look at something and, because like Final Fantasy, there there's always going to be money there, so they can have re-release after re-release, and people will buy it. Like, no matter which one it's going to be, like they'll people will buy it because the name recognition is there. Yeah. But it's also, they, they made a new version of it. Like it's a, it, they re they literally remade it. That, so that's, that's part of it. That comes in too, is they think, Oh, we'll update it for modern sensibilities. And they, th- but that's everything that's remade. is like in the spirit of, or in like a modern day spinoff of, and yeah, I, I mean this, this one is legitimately, it's just, it was made for the Nintendo DS. It, the graphics are just really wonky and just shitty, <laughs> like just flat out shitty. It's bizarre. And it maybe it's one of those things like this. I remember, you know, when you're a kid and every movie you watch, they, you you just imagine comes from the same place. If you watch a movie, you don't you you don't really recognize there are studios and directors. You just as a kid, you say, I want to watch a movie. And whether it's a cartoon or a live action, I, I always just assume they came from the same place. Mm hmm. And when you, when you think of it like that, it's like, okay, it's, it's just the same bunch of people trying to do their best. They're good and bad and yada, yada, yada. But then when you realize that, you know, the scales fall from your eyes and these franchises are helmed by different person after different person. Because like, you know, for the people who love final fantasy seven, like, let's just use that as an example. If you were interested in the original, you working on the remake isn't going to be a passion project. And like that usually shows like, if you don't care about something, you're just doing it to update it. It's like, who cares? Yeah. But eh, it, it's, it's dicey. Cause you get like, we saw this with mighty number no. nine too. It's like the nostalgia says, Oh man, here's a guy who knows quote unquote knows what he's doing. Let's throw money at him. You, you, it's everything's a crapshoot. All you have is old games because those will never change. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. pretty much. <laughs> True. But the thing that will change is their availability because the people who sell them to you will quit selling them to you. And, but, there, and, and you know, whatever. There's homebrew community. I'm sure there's a way you could like hack something in there because the, the, there's no reason for me to get excited about this because I will never see a PlayStation 5 in reality, probably. PGA will probably send me a picture of it. <laughs> if that's how I'll see a PS5. Uh so PJ, I think this uh was an interesting experience. I yeah. was hoping here's how I wanted it to go. I would have finished the game and have a total write-up for it. Since it was hard, I never finished it. However, I'm gonna say it was real fun. <laughs> 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 and I'll probably keep playing it. I, I will I will definitely still play it more, even though I'm not good at it. Because I'll I'll get to a point where I want to keep pushing through because I want to beat it because it fr- like it frustrates me, but I also want to beat it. So, I think yeah. you and I need to try because you can do remote play on this. So if I can get my controller to work, I think you and I should stream playing together. Okay. Just just to see how long it'll take before one of us is shouting at the other. <laughs> I don't think it'll. Take I'm that sure long. that won't take. I, yeah, long. I'm sure it won't take long, but I. It'll be like, you know, the time that someone bet that I couldn't say, here's the thing. Uh-huh. Like it'll, it'll be over before you know it, but I think it'll be interesting because you, you need to experience that. I'm telling you playing this game, single player only, you're doing yourself a disservice. You're losing literally 20 kilobytes of the 40 that you have. available. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that with a second player, it becomes more dynamic, more interesting and more frustrating, but also potentially more fun. Once you wrap your head around that, uh, getting fucked over by the other person or just their lack of skill doesn't necessarily mean the game is over. That's true. Yeah. So it's, it's, they thought ahead. They were like, let's make it annoying like Battletoads, but 
a JK at the end because you don't actually die. Mm. Uh, so, uh, PJ, do you want to recommend anything to anybody while we're, uh, uh, you know, I think we're both putting our stamp of approval on micromages. So, uh, I just beyond that this week beat Yakuza like a dragon. So I would give that a high recommendation. I'm, I'm in the middle of so many games. So I'm like, um, I don't know. I've, I, I have this idea of going through all of the Atari 2600 games one at a time, like just spending an hour at a time playing as long as I could in a game alphabetically. Cause I've, some of them are just incomprehensible. Like I'm going through this and because you'd think you would think PJ, the Atari 2600 had a joystick and a button. How complicated could that game be? How confusing could it be with a button and a joystick? However, 70% of the games I pull and try to play, I have no idea what the fuck is happening. There's like loud noises <laughs> and there's people moving and there's one. It seems so interesting to me. It's like the cityscape and there's little pink figures and little blue figures and they're all running all over the, all over the place. My button and my joystick do nothing. So I don't know if it's just like watching people running simulator. It's confusing, but that's the Atari 2600 for you. <laughs> wild, wild west. It's nuts. And some of these games I'm like, cause the, the, the 2600 is such a bizarre place because you can have simple, straightforward games like Yars Revenge, where it's nothing more than like breakout and you're just shooting. Like there's a one screen and it's a static thing. Were there others like I found this game? I thought it was a modern day game because it was so polished. You're like this little Robin Hood guy. And you're running around. It reminded me of Halo 2600, like made in 2010, <laughs> but it was from 1983. We'll talk about it later. So uh, you're going to go ahead and recommend Yakuza like a dragon. Yep. Nice. I still want that game. However, I'll get it when it's 20 bucks and all the DLC is thrown in. Oh, it's fantastic. I love it. it it's it has. One of the better stories I have seen in games in a very long time. I'm, I have to be honest with myself at this point in my life, because there was a time when I could sit down and, you know, whatever, go through a, a heavy narrative based game, like red dead or red dead Two. Like I could sit down and be like, yeah, but then you have a kid and you have so little time. Like, that's why I'm probably great. Like maybe that's exactly why I'm like, Oh, our Atari 2600. You start up the game. There's no story. You're a frog. You're a turtle. You're a dude running away from a robot. You've got eight seconds to figure out the game and play. And that's exactly the amount of time you have before your son shits himself again. <laughs> so the 2600. Right the, like, like it's like clockwork. Yeah. yeah. If you've got a kid, the 2600 is the best system for you. Because <laughs> you eat some flies. Then you go wipe an ass. <laughs> Anyway, uh, I don't think I've, I don't think I've got anything to recommend beyond like the, my little, whatever tablet here that I've gushed about enough already. Um, I guess that's it guys. Thanks for showing up to the show. Uh, typing square. If you're still here, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. there's five people, <laughs> five whole people. Yeah. Whew. Let's be real. Uh, there, there were times during this show that I checked out. I was so uninterested. So the fact that there are five people, <laughs> not, nothing against you, PJ. I mean, like me, I was like, Ooh, what, who is saying all this boring shit? <laughs> anyway, PJ, once again, thanks for being on the show, man. Like you're rapidly becoming a fixture and a, um, you're, you're like our senior video game correspondent. Yeah. Like I, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> so yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, Yattering says, fuck yeah. Woo. And a whole bunch of bombs. Boom. Yeah. We <laughs> so many, like whatever. I, I, I don't want to go off on another tangent because I can, but I won't. <laughs> we all know you can. I've got so <laughs> many. There's never a time when you can't. Yeah. I mean, here's the thing. Uh, Here think about stories is I've got so many of them. None of them go anywhere. I don't need to tell them, but somehow I still keep them. <laughs> like that one like that one that wasn't a story that's just explaining why i keep so many stories because mm. there's really no reason mm. anyway 
Uh, yeah. So remember the last time, uh, PJ, when you were on the show and I was like, next time I'm going to have an outro. Like I'll write it down. Yeah. Guess what didn't happen? No outro. Here we are. <laughs> 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 Uh, so anyway, uh, it, what, happy Flamingo Friday, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Um, I've got some stuff in the works, which I'll keep you up to date on. We've, uh, I don't like, here's, here's another quick story, PJ. <laughs> I don't like <laughs> telling people I'm doing things because nine times out of 10, the thing that I'm trying to do falls apart. So yep. I've tried not to tell people I'm doing things because I know they're not going to work. This I think is going to work. So I'm going to be uh, like co-hosting a movie review type show coming up. We've got a pilot in the can. So whatever, if you're interested in that, there's my recommendation. Um, I'll keep you up to date. Technical difficulties as we go, obviously, because it's me at the helm or at least behind the camera. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I guess that's it. What else is going on, PJ? I know we're we're ending the show, but I feel like now's the time we can really just sort of relax, <laughs> going on? check in with each other, you know, get the lay of the land. No, all right, we're out of here. That. <laughs> I don't want to keep you anymore. I'm sure your girlfriend is like, I'm tired of being quiet. Yeah. <laughs> so, guys, once again, thanks for watching, and we will see you next time on a live show here on this channel. Bye. Bye. Bye.